Hey guys, what's up? It's Stacking Chairs, the youth ministry podcast all about serving in youth ministry, whether it be youth group or youth camp, whatever God has you serving in, that's what we're talking about. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Paul Hamas. I'm joined by my fellow host and good friend, Two Gun Kyle. Two Gun Kyle. I don't know. When you started out, I started going, pop, 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 pop. So and I was like, why Kyle. did I do that? So. Boy, if they had only seen that, where could they see it, Kyle? They could see it at any place that we show our videos on our YouTube <laughs> fellowship page, there you go. which is found, Josh. On YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. On the tube so, of you. Yeah. And we're joined. If you're watching, you already seen him. And if you're not and you're listening, you are missing here's out. Here's the noise he makes. Hi. And That's right. His name is Jordan Wirtz. <laughs> Jordan Wirtz, uh, as as always, ladies and gentlemen, we are in, well, I shouldn't say as always, we are in camp right, right now, now during the season. Yeah. But Jordan Wirtz, again, I did another Pennsylvania thing. As always, Jordan Wirtz. Yeah. And I, and I jumped into, we, we were talking earlier before the podcast about how us Pennsylvanians like say things. We have, very, we have a very distinct way of speaking. Yes. The way that we speak is very distinct. Yeah. Like that. You yeah. say everything backward. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> Master Yoga. <laughs> Master Yoga. Hey, so, uh, so Jordan is our junior camp speaker. Actually, our last junior camp speaker. For this year. For this year. Not ever. We are never doing junior camp again. It's canceled. News update. Uh, well, you know, I mean, junior camp, it just came up in culture and it's just, yeah. you know, it got canceled. So, uh. <laughs> No, but yeah, so expect to hear camp happening in the background. It's inevitable. Uh, my radio is all the way over there. Oh, so we might I, not I hear it as well. I think it's off, <laughs> but I don't okay. know if I still have my radio off or not. So I'm so sorry. But hey, Jordan uh, is talking through junior camp with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all now Jordan is not originally a Pennsylvania boy. Correct. I am not. You were originally from? Uh, Virginia, Indiana, all over the place. Michigan. Where were you born, though? Virginia. Northern Virginia. Virginia. In, in a hospital, yes. actually. Yes. Oh, good. That's a good start. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Uh, Jordan actually traveled with me. Did he? Well, I traveled with Jordan. Sure. We, traveled we traveled together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, For an I was trying year. to remember. Okay. So there were two. So we, we traveled on, on the team, the Impact team, uh, which started out as Impact Singers, then went to Just Guys, uh, I think because... A lot of the guys and girls were like, you know, like, hey, let's get married. And they're oh, like, yeah. uh, you know, so <laughs> distraction. I don't, I don't actually know if that's what was happening, but I know that it definitely, that definitely was did it. happen. Yeah. Um, so they went to the impact team. It was all guys. Uh, we had two vans. I could not remember outside of a couple different guys, Mike Brummel and Dave Carter. I remember always traveled in the other van. Were you always yeah. in the van with me and Osborne and... Uh, eventually Josh Van Slyke and Andy Mater. Yes. Okay. I, I, I was in the van. That I, I thought, so. remember we, we turned the one seat around and Part, we called party it seat. the party seat. Yeah. And Turn we used to play, backwards. we used to play phase 10. We used to play Rook. Uh, nice. Rook. We used to play. Even uh, the driver would play Rook. <laughs> they would turn the mirror, aim it down so they could see the front row. For real? And they yep. hold the cards in their hands. And we, and you were supposed to not look at the drivers. Yeah. Like, Cause they, uh, yeah, they couldn't hide their cards. Yeah. Jeez. And they would just kind of reach their arm backwards. Yeah, and this is the here. '90s version actually. of. Uh, no, whoa, whoa! Oh, you guys aren't that old. This was 2000 to 2001. Yeah, oh, off. barely did miss the '90s. All right, this is the 2000 version yes. of uh, of driving while watching a football game. Yeah, yeah. I'd Which, say a little less distraction yeah. than that, but not yeah. much. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, oh, we no. were better drivers back then. Oh, is that so? Yeah. 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 No GPS. Day. No cell yeah. phones. Yeah. We had to drive up the okay, hill but with my snow favorite, both ways. My favorite situation was all right. We used to drive. Our driver had a map, uh -huh. and another driver had a had a <laughs> had a laptop <laughs> with uh, streets and maps on oh. CD. Remember? No, remember? no I don't remember and, that. I guess I blocked and, that memory. And and we always were like, these are the worst driving directions in the world. And sometimes we would cross out of his and be like, hey guys, can we just pull over to the side of the road? I need to take that CD out and put the next <laughs> <laughs> CD in. That's <laughs> wild. What a different world. Uh, we had two C CB radios yep, and yep. yeah, we had no idea where we were going. Ever. No idea. Sometimes we actually ended up in, in the right spot most of the time. Yeah. Uh, hey, any of those old, old impact guys, our year, any other year, you're welcome on the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, so Jordan, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Word of Life now, where oh, you, you are. about him now? Yeah, yeah let's hear it. We just know. want to live in the past? I mean- I loved hearing about it. You don't want to talk about people CDs? write in all the time and talk about how when you talk about the old times that it's just well, it's out, they just don't understand. You know? Yeah, <laughs> parents just don't understand. Okay, so Jordan, right now you are your title is you are. I am an area missionary with Word of Life in uh, Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania, a little bit of West Virginia, a little bit of Maryland, working with Word of Life Youth Ministries, 
And so I work with youth groups, children's ministries, um, primarily with the leaders. We do leadership yeah. training, uh, help them with their discipleship programs at the church. Really, our main two goals are every student everywhere hearing the gospel from a friend mm-hmm. and every student everywhere growing in their relationship with the Lord. Uh, I know you, you've you had Dare to Share people on oh, yeah. the mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. And, our, the listeners uh, are definitely familiar yes, with that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so we we nail that down in the right down to the local church yeah. uh, with their kids' ministries, their youth ministries, mm-hmm. um, try to get that embedded in their kind of their DNA and their culture. And then a lot of times help doing that through um, the normal weekly ministry, but also through yeah. evangelistic events and training yeah. conferences, things like that. Well, was, before, hang on, before we talk about that, yeah. do you have a favorite church that you Ooh, work with in the area? That you want to Ooh, shout out to? Man, that's rough. I would have to say, I, I think this is where it's be leading me. One of my favorite churches happens to be the home church of Mr. Josh Paul Hamas. Oh, wow. What and, a coincidence. Uh, oh, my yeah. goodness. That's so you crazy. know what? I'm out of here. That was the right answer. I, I will say, though, and this is not, <laughs> I tell people this all the time, even when I'm not on a podcast, that that uh, the Olympians, that's our children's ministry for elementary grades, Mm -hmm. the Olympians leaders from First Baptist Church Uh in Jersey Shore, or Calvary Baptist in Jersey, sorry. That's close. Calvary, can you delete that off the podcast? (laughs) Uh, Calvary Baptist in Jersey Shore are like my favorite team because they have like the best teamwork. Most leaders have been together for like over a decade. Well, my parents have been leading that that ministry. Is that that your church? Yeah, for 29 years. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to call foul. Because I hear that it's only because they serve wings or, or <laughs> I love my parents did tell showing me. up on Wednesday nights and getting wings there at, it is. I, yeah, at I Gamble about Farm that. Inn yeah. and half off wings on Wednesday nights. If you yeah. ever want to show up to Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania on Wednesday nights, get half off wings wow. and a little bit of fellowship as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but they have, they just, they work great, like yeah. teamwork together. They've been together for, oh, you're about to say how many years? Like, My parents have been the leaders for 29 years. 29? And your dad wow. has had a mustache for that entire time. He's had a mustache since ninth grade. He's never shaved off his mustache. <laughs> I'm not exactly. Wow. Yeah. That's commitment. Yeah. Your dad had wild. a mustache in ninth grade? It started to come in. Who's crazy. talking about the past now, Joshua? That's fair. That's fair. Okay. That uh, but but, 70s, but Jordan also we were talking about before the podcast runs Eighties. into people that knew me when I was a kid, yes. yeah, um, or knew me as an adult. But like, there's like this like blank space, this void that he's never met anybody that knew me in high school. Yeah, uh, fortunate th- for thank you. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much, all of you. I yeah. appreciate Who it. For, uh, they have blocked yeah. those memories from their <laughs> lives. You're done from evil. Um. So yeah. But, okay. So Jordan, you are doing you're doing a lot of events. You do discipleship yeah. events. You do evangelism events. Now, um, specifically, pause for a second. Uh, you actually will show up at a church and pretty much for the most part, you'll organize it with them. You want to do it with them, but you will put on predominantly a lot of it for them so that they don't have to do all the creation, all the execution. Why, why is that so important? Uh, do you think as, as, as we're working with churches? Yeah, I, th- I think there's a couple things about that. I mean, there are great times for something the church is going to do that fits maybe with their community, uh, an example back at our um, where we used to attend church when we lived in Michigan, they had an event in the town called Railroad Days. There's lots of train tracks going through town. They had like mm-hmm. a fair, carnival, all that. Everything costs money, and the the community could be you know some a lot of people in the community didn't have a lot of money to go ride the rides, mm-hmm. buy that kind of fair food. Mm-hmm. So our church would do a free fun fair at the same the same day, kind of on the edge of town. So it wasn't competing with their carnival. We weren't oh, gotcha. stealing business from yeah, the yeah, yeah. people selling funnel cakes or whatever. But we would do free food and free activities and you know horseback rides and That's cool. dunk tanks and and all that and information about the church. So that wasn't something Word of Life was doing. That wasn't something where I was bringing everything to the church, but yeah. I was able to help out yeah. and and we're kind of piggybacking on things that are already happening, maybe at like I said, a community festival or just something that fits with your church calendar or whatever, yeah. but, but that's obviously a lot more work for the church. And then there are occasions where it's b- easier, better, whatever for that. I can come in and say, you know what, you got to promote the event. Um, maybe I was just talking about one of our events. I was sending messages last night or the night before, you know, I need some tables and, you know, guys can buy yeah. some prizes, but I'm bringing everything else you need. I got the projector. I got mm. the sound system. I got the all the equipment you need, yeah. pretty much you guys can show up and just help me as I set things up. But it's a little more, you know, you just turnkey. You just right. So, so which there. is your favorite to run? Because you have Reverb, which is the All Night Student Ministries evangelistic yes. event. You still do that with the Hershey Bears? Yeah, Hershey Bears in okay. the Hershey area. Okay. Uh, you do Storm event, which is sending teens out to reach the masses. Yes. You still do Storms? Yeah, sometimes. I haven't done a whole lot of those. Okay. Um, but they're, they're a great event to... 
um, that doesn't, it takes place usually on the normal youth night. It's kind of like amped up youth night where mm. everything's mm. bigger. Mm. Um, and obviously a focus on evangelism because it's a, a f- an event to get teens to yeah. bring their friends, bring their neighbors. You do, that. you do fast car, Definitely. which is basically Pinewood Derby, but then anybody can walk in at the last minute and participate in but it. It's just matchbox cars, with matchbox cars, yeah. which yeah. I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, you do slopstacle? Do you do slopstacle? I've never done one. I like the idea, and I've talked to churches about it. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. Yeah. But it's okay. a great, you know, kind of obstacle course, kind so, of a combination of color run and the again, tough mudder. But again, you've you've got this thing all set up, and I'm sure that it's not just like, hey, let's pull out a calendar, set a date, and it just happens. Yeah, definitely not. Um, it is a lot. It's still a lot of planning, even if I'm kind of bringing everything for it. We've, we love fast cars. A good example because those I've done the most of those. We've done yeah. over 100 fast cars. Wow. Wow. And... Um, you guys just did one at, at my parents' church. Yeah, wow. just this, here this we spring. are back talking about your <laughs> parents' church, and it was excellently run. Super creative <laughs> decorations. They listen to this podcast. You're doing a good job. And okay, an yeah. amazing mustache. <laughs> yes. By the way, Mr. Paul Hamus, if your mustache wants to be on the podcast, we'll let it be. <laughs> um, okay, so very quick, which is your favorite one to run? I love reverb and I grew up going to the kind of the predecessor called Super Bowl yeah. um, back in the nineties, way a long time ago. And I, I loved helping with them when I first came on staff for the first number of years and now it's called reverb. And now I'm actually the guy running the, the Hershey one. I love it, but it's such a big animal and it's huge oh, yeah, and there's hundreds. I literally of have a task list of several hundred tasks on it that I need to remember each year. Yeah. And I kind of update it as the, you know, when I get ready for the next year. So I, I, that's a bit, and I, I love it, but it's a little stressful because it's so big. Yeah. We have in the Hershey area, we've had anywhere up to 1300 people at the wow. event, yeah. and, you know, each November. Lot. So I would say fast car. Cause in the point I've done over hundred, we've done over a hundred of them. I can kind of like load my van up. I don't have to think as much about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long you're as exactly I put the right, I have a packing do. list. As long yeah. as I put everything on that packing list in my van yeah. and the church has done their part of it as far as promoting it and getting some helpers yeah. and stuff like that, I know it's going to work. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but so I'd say that's my favorite. And we've done them, you know, my kids are a little older now, but when they were younger, we'd pack three of them in the van with all the equipment. And you had to literally climb over the equipment yeah, yeah, to get yeah. to the back seat of the van. Like the party seat. Yeah. You know, party I'm seat, playing yeah. Rook and-, and stuff would, <laughs> we'd make a turn and stuff would fall on the kid in the back because they had boxes oh stacked up next to them. <clears throat> nothing heavy. Yeah. No, nothing, it actually yeah. was a, a church donated a bunch of uh, expired little Debbie treats oh, and nice. it, it didn't weigh much. It was they're a big like, box. They're so excited. Like, they like, on yes! them. well, I made a turn and the box of uh, little Debbie treats fell on my daughter, Bella. So. And then only nice. four of them, four boxes of them got eaten, you know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. they all, they came out of yeah. the packaging and then, okay. So, but obviously this thing doesn't just happen. So walk us through, what are some things that you've learned as far as kind of like planning, preparation, because we don't want to just have the events. We yeah. want to have e- events that happen with excellence. Yes, yeah. definitely. So what what are some different things that you've tried to say, hey, um, here here are some things I've done to, to pull that off with excellence? Yeah, I think the first thing as you're, the, maybe as a leadership team, as children's workers, youth workers, I mean, this I guess could go for any age group. The idea is start with why. Why are you doing this event? We can yeah, very purpose. easily kind of fall into just doing it because we did it last year. We've Oof. done it for 15 years. Uh, there are times that, okay, that works. The event is still yeah. accomplishing its purpose. Yeah. And there's times to maybe take a break from it. Mm. It's not so much canceling it, but maybe it's got a little fatigue behind it. It's not yeah. exciting anymore. Yeah. Maybe doing it every other year. And then there are times you just got to stop the event for various reasons. Mm. Um, our church just stopped doing an event we'd done for years. And I think there were some logistic reasons. We lost some of the resources that were very important to doing the event. Okay. So people moved away from our church that helped in a major way. But there also was, we, we kind of fallen away from the purpose. It wasn't mm. as evangelistic. A lot of people were just treating it as like a fellowship event, which is good. And we replaced yeah. oh, it. You need those. We replaced it with an event specifically for fellowship gotcha. instead of trying to still call it an evangelistic event, but it went, when it wasn't really evangelistic yeah. anymore. Mm. But if you, you know think of what, why are we doing this? And it doesn't have to always, there are reasons to have fellowship events, evangelistic events, yeah. discipleship events, um, even training, uh, training, whether training your youth, training your teens or training your workers yeah. mm. and make sure it's accomplishing the purpose you actually set, you know, for it. And again, it can be really easy. And it can be also be really hard to, to kill the event because people love the thing that yeah. they've gone oh, to for the last 15 yeah. years. I didn't think about that. And yeah. There's a lot of like emotion. I mean, that's, there's a, there's a term, it's not a very nice sounding term, so I won't say what it is, but there's a term, <laughs> in, <laughs> that sounds funny, but in, in filmmaking, there's a term about like killing off the thing that's really important Whoa, to you. Why do you have to say killing? Sorry. Uh, leaving go, <laughs> letting go of the thing that's really important yeah. to you, but for the sake of what your purpose is. So like if you're yeah. making a film and you have this 
shot that you did and everything was built around this shot. Hmm. Well, everything else is going to suffer for it. And so it sounds like events can be the same way, but yeah. people are going to feel attached to it, right? Oh, yeah, I you mean, watch the deleted scenes for a movie, you're like, that was a really good scene, but yeah. you had to cut it because it was yeah. make the movie it was a four six hour hours long. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, sure. yeah. Lord so of the Rings. There's times it's really important to, yeah. to cut that stuff. Yeah, that what, makes sense. What, what else? What else have you learned? Yeah. Uh, one thing, and again, we can very easily fall into traps of trying to do it ourselves. Um, if you're the key leader of the group, the administrator, <laughs> maybe a youth pastor or a senior pastor, you can try to do everything yourself. You might even say, I've got a team, mm -hmm. but when it actually comes down to it, 90, 95% of stuff is, is being done by you, or you have mm -hmm. to check off everything. You have to prove everything yeah. and you're not really empowering other people to be a part of it. Um, allowing people to use their giftedness and yeah. that for, I mean, obviously you're going to burn yourself out and that's not good, yeah. but also there are people in your church that have gifts, that have giftedness, that have skills. And uh, sometimes they might not know they want to serve, but if given the opportunity, maybe given a little bit of encouragement, a little push or a little yeah. training, they can mm. do great things. But sometimes you just don't know it because you're trying to hold on to too much. You're trying to take on too much responsibility yeah. and, and the event will be better the more you can delegate, the more you can get more people involved because it's not just your mm. your baby anymore. And yeah. It hurts sometimes. Again, that's a thing of reverb. Sometimes I like to be the one to be in charge of everything. And there's times um, my wife, Bonnie, has said like other people, could, yes, you could do this. It was down. Mm. To, I needed to build a prop. And that's not, I mean, I can build things okay. Sure. But she's just like, why don't you just put it on Facebook and ask if anybody would, you know, I, I put a picture of what I was thinking of, yeah. put it on Facebook and like within Five ten. It was that evening. A couple minutes. Yeah. I had messages back from a guy who was a shop teacher in public school. Can't be. No and way. he's like, yeah. "I'll build it." He wouldn't. Let, he wouldn't let me pay him for the wood. He. I think he had the students help him with it. He even oh, delivered fun. it to a close. He was farther away. He yeah. Delivered it to a closer church for me to pick it up, and it was better than I would have built it. What I was mean, the like prop? a lot. A uh, game called um, box hockey. Okay. Um, look I it up. It's fun. That sounds familiar. It's the one with like the, the little box in front of you and then there's like the holes in it. And you have to you like stand on it and hit it with either. Some people use hockey sticks, right? Oh, PVC pipes. That's not it's, like a, it's, a whole, <laughs> it's a box that you play hockey in, Josh. Oh, Hence it's the name. Box hockey. Box yeah. hockey. Yeah. 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 Box hockey. If you, if you Google box it, you'll hockey. find it. And uh, it's a fine user reverb. And, and uh, again, he built it better than I would have built it. Mine sure. would have been a little <laughs> janky and his was better quality, definitely. Yeah. Leave but it yeah, to a shop teacher. Yeah. yeah, leave it to chops. Yeah, which which and 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 I think with that, I I don't allow other people to be a part of it. And frankly, I don't think the event is as enjoyable as it could be if if I'm the one trying to do everything. Because usually when I do that, then I'm stressed out, and then mm, yeah. this didn't happen the way. That, and at the same time, sometimes I can go the other way, and I can go, well, this event isn't as much fun unless I'm the one doing it because you don't do yeah. it right, which isn't always. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how important is fun, do you think, when you guys are pulling off events? Because sometimes it's like, we can be like, yeah, but but this is the main focus of the event. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the focus isn't always going to be fun, but I think fun needs to be a part of every every event that we do with, with youth, especially, because mm. that's going to be the draw. That's going to be the thing that's going to attract people. But again, when I get down to sharing the gospel, my, you know, a gospel presentation, I don't think I'm cracking jokes uh, very much. Now, maybe leading up to it or coming out of it, yeah, or there's yeah, going to yeah. be some fun, you know, fast cars fun and reverb's fun. And we goof off and we do tons of, you know, fun things and throw prizes into the crowd at reverb and, mm. you know, stay up all night eating pizza and bowling and all that stuff. But the whole, the whole reason we're doing it is the gospel. Mm. And so that's, that's primary. That's, but again, it's the fun is going to, is going to be what's, what draws people in yeah. that gets you to be able to ask an unsaved classmate or whatever to come to this. You know, if you say, Oh, we're going to this gospel event, they mm. probably aren't going to come, Yeah, but fun always needs to be part of it. And you, you know, whether it be camp again, we get real serious when we share the Bible uh, here at camp and we get real serious when we're doing, you know, again, a gospel presentation or a training event. If you're training your teens on evangelism, you're going to get real serious about how to share the gospel, doing it accurately, doing it um, clearly, all that. Mm -hmm. But yet we should still have fun yeah. Yeah. and um, make it enjoyable. Again, no, nobody wants to be at something boring or, you know, dried out and tired. Yeah, no, no absolutely. you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Uh, anything else kind of, and again, I know we could go on and on and on, but, but the idea of, of putting stuff together, we talked about, yeah. you know, knowing the why, uh, working with your team, making sure that it's fun. Yeah. I think another thing is uh, it kind of ties in with teamwork a little bit, but think about your resources. Think about the people, whether they be in your church or like this guy that didn't attend our church, but I knew him and we're Facebook friends. Who's able to help build that, that prop for me, but think about who you have. Think about the, you know, whether it be, there's times we've had people that they don't want to be the regular every week 
you know, youth leader or children's mm-hmm. worker, but when something comes up, they're willing to drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're willing to peop- let people come use their house, you know, as mm-hmm. a great, you know, change things up, get off property, or they have a great pool. That's an, obviously a good, fun summer activity is yeah. to let the yeah. youth group come. You know, that happens at your church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People your go church use, has a pool? No, but. No, no, no. But like people in the church oh. have, and we do pool I was parties like, and stuff. What don't you guys have? You got Wings <laughs> Wednesday, you got a pool. Well, yeah. you have a baptismal. There's we also, talked about that. We, we talked do, about yeah. playing in the- We have a parking lot. Yeah, they have a parking lot and they have a little- and Josh, you have a- <laughs> Not every church has a parking lot, Kyle. <laughs> and they have a grass lot they can play kickball the, on. The grass lot's pretty great. That's yeah. a nice grass lot. Yeah, there's a grass lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're like just a, jealous, Kyle. It's like an outside uncovered gym. <sighs> yeah, man. You know what? You're right. Yeah. I, uh, Check yourself. Before I wreck myself. There used okay. to be a little, uh, little restaurant on the other side of the grass lot called- uh, Wing Wednesday? No, IDK. And so you'd say, where do you want to go to eat? And you, and so I don't respond, know, I don't know, or IDK. And then they'd always say that was like their slogan and uh, they went out of business. So they were, uh-huh. you know, they was, do you know why they went out of business? Uh, they were garbage. Oh, I thought you were saying IDK. I no, we, I yeah. Oh, oh man, I missed it. Uh, cut that, cut, let's start over. The key to timing is comedy. <sighs> <laughs> the key to, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll bring that up later. I <laughs> you also want to make sure you think about like what the, your church already has. There's time stuff yeah. like you got great props, you got great, great equipment, things like mm-hmm. that, but it's, oh. it's like buried or maybe you could use things in a different way. Um, yeah. Get creative, get creative with what you have. Yeah. And, well, um, and I think as you're kind of even going through this um, and I know, I know I've actually, Josh, I have a brand new thing I want to say. Mm-hmm. I've never talked about this before. <laughs> I want to talk about having preparation meetings, mm. not planning meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's preparations old news. Meeting. Planning yeah. meetings are yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Oh, planning meetings Keep it fresh. old. Keep it clean. But preparation meetings, just so you can prepare yourself. But but here's what I would say: if you can do that yearly planning, yeah, you you might go, hey, this is an event. We just do it because we do it. Or, hey, this year for this event, you could be in charge of this thing. Or, hey, yeah. what does the church have? Or what resource do we have to network out? Yeah. But also putting stuff away for a while and then bringing it out a couple years later. Like, I think yeah. there's there's sometimes we'll go through our old closets and we'll be like, oh, this is, we haven't used this in years. Nothing is more fun to a two-year-old than bringing out a toy that they haven't used for a week. Like, that's exactly the same mentality. You just put something away for a little bit, and then when it comes back, you're like, oh, do you guys remember we used to play this game? We need to play this again. Do you think that's what my wife has done with my Nintendo 64? (laughs) Yeah, it's hidden away, so that way one day- But then she forgot where it was, so she can't pull it out to make you excited about it. Forgot. Play GoldenEye. No, there was a- there was a podcast I was listening to about like uh, how they did a TV show and they said for the first few seasons, they would always think, okay, what's, what can we accomplish mm. with what we have already? And that's mm. how they built out the show. And it was, you know, very successful, but then they got to a point where they came to a director and the director said, um, I want you guys, you guys are always doing this stuff. He goes, what's something that, that you have in your mind of, of an episode for a show? Let's think of how we can go outside the box and do it all the way to like the max. And so it was like a, a football stadium was like one of the things they were going to just shoot it in a way that seemed like they were outside the stadium or something like that. And he's like, no, let's do it in the stadium. Let's do it during a football game. And that way we can have this footage of it. And so I think there's a side of the creativity where it's like, okay, let's think of the resources we have because then when you build on that, then you can go, okay, what's the one thing that we can get or what's the one thing we can right. do outside of that. Right. And then you add that extra level as well. Well, but, but with that, you have to then have people on your team mm-hmm. that think differently than you think. Absolutely. That, that bring stuff to the table or possibly, possibly give them the chance that, because maybe they do it better than you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for instance, I noticed that both of you guys are wearing orange shirts and I'm not. <laughs> you were earlier today. I was, changed. I was. What a failure. Well, you had to change for a camp song. No. Is that why? Camp video. Oh, camp video. Yeah. Yeah. And here you are. I button. could sit yeah. all the way back here for you guys. Yeah. And- I keep out of the shot. So it's <laughs> yeah. just people in orange shirts. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but uh, Jordan, how would you, cause you're working with leadership teams. Yeah. You're helping them to, you're, oh, sorry. You're like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not talking to you. I'm just agreeing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just keep going. You got this. Are you going to leave that in there? Yeah, yeah. You're doing Perfect. great. Oh, <laughs> thanks so much, Josh. So Jordan, as you're talking about developing leadership teams and developing the people that are there, how often do you talk about finding other people that think differently than that team? Yeah. It's a, it's a big part of, of, a, of teamwork. Why, why we do, because if, if we do things by ourselves, obviously we only have our own experience, our own knowledge, our own 
personality, our own skill set. But as soon as we can get people around us, and that's why I mean, teamwork is so important. Um, there's nothing to me, nothing uh, sadder than going to a youth ministry and it's all run by one person. Mm. They can't, and there's other reasons. There's things like you can't do effective small groups and you can't, yeah. they're not going to hear different voices when, you, when the lessons are taught, you know, throughout the year, whatever. But another part of why that's sad is that they're not getting the, the, the full yeah. breadth of what they could get if different people are teaching, different people are coming up with the games, different people are doing worship or, or mm-hmm. whatever. And, and, and that goes to events as well, mm. because again, I'm only, I only know what I know right? and I only have the experiences I have yeah. and um, I'm always benefiting from, I mean, I'm, we, I've, I just found an old email years ago when I was like, I'm kind of out of fast car messages. I've done this in fast car at the same church multiple years. I'm always going to be a gospel presentation. <clears throat> I emailed all the missionaries I knew that did fast cars and said, you know, could you share with me either notes or an outline or just an idea of yeah. what you're doing. Cause yeah, we try to have something maybe racing themed or mm-hmm. something with a good visual or a good object lesson or whatever. And you know, I'm only going to benefit even if I don't take every idea or if yeah. I take someone's idea and I adapt it a little bit to who I am. Yeah. Um, that's only going to benefit me. There's no downside to that. Mm. No. Yeah. It takes mm-hmm. a little more time. You can't wing it. You can't yeah, yeah, the yeah. night before go, Oh wait, I need to have a, an evangelistic message for tomorrow. Obviously then I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's when the, the planning is important. The task list is important. Mm-hmm. I can't ask somebody to build mm-hmm. a prop for me if I think of it the night before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that had, that was something I thought of, you know, two or three months ahead. Mm-hmm. So I had plenty of time for him to build it. Yeah. Come up with a plan and then to deliver it and me to pick it up, all that. Yeah. Are there other sides to like the practicality of like actually running the events? Because like we've talked a lot about the planning and then yeah. we're going into teamwork now of the like the practicality. Not preparation, the not the planning. <laughs> yeah. The preparation of the <laughs> events. Like what does running the event look like? Like the teamwork's a large aspect of it, I'm sure. But yeah. like what other stuff kind of lends to the practicality of running the event? Yeah. And again, starting with teamwork, starting with every, you know, making sure everybody's got Mm-hmm. the task, what they, what part of it they're playing. So again, even on the night of or the day of, it's not, mm-hmm. nothing can happen until you are in the room. Nothing can happen. You can't move to the next thing because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, and it's bad for you too because you don't even get a chance to breathe. Yeah. And I can fall into that real easy, especially at some a big event like Reverb. I try to communicate. I try to make sure there's people in charge of the various parts of it, but there's times like I can't help this other group because I still got to explain to this team what their job is. And, and I try to communicate that in advance, but sometimes it just, you know, yeah. you fall short and I want it to be able to run smooth. It'd be great to be able to just talk to the teens, to yeah. be able to talk to the youth leaders instead of having to put out fires or communicate to this other, I could just talk. I could say, how was your trip? You know, was yeah. it good? You know, how many teens did you get? How many un- unchurched teens do you think you have at this event? And that's great. We'll be praying for them and looking yeah, forward to, yeah, you know, yeah. hearing afterwards. And, but sometimes all I'm doing is, is moving to the next issue, the next problem. Mm. And, um, if I can, can you know, kind of create under, you know, the, the mm-hmm. sergeants that can be in charge of various parts, then yeah. that's just going to, again, that's just going to benefit me and it's going to get more people involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't want to be the guy who right at the beginning is still, I don't know, stacking chairs. Or I'd say unstacking chairs at yeah. that point. Yeah. <laughs> unstacking them, Sorry. setting them up. Uh, Time making, is all about comedy. Making what? man, this keeps getting messed up. Uh, <laughs> making photocopies yeah. or like doing. You want to be prepared. I remember uh, I had kind of like a mentor missionary. He retired shortly after we came on staff, but he was in our our region. And I, I'm not getting his wording exactly right, but I I'd, I'd rather spend six hours of preparation. I'd rather stay up till midnight in preparation yeah. if it even helps me avoid a half hour of stress on the day of the event. Yeah. I'd rather kill myself in preparation just yeah. so the actual day can be calm. And reminds, I don't always get there, but yeah, it reminds me of the, the old, the old saying, uh, if I have six hours to cut down a tree, I'll spend four hours sharpening the ax. It's exactly the same kind of like takeaway. You're looking at me like you've never heard that before. They have, trees, they have lots of trees before. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So. I've never heard that. You've never heard that before. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously I have because you just said it. Yeah. But that's, I feel like that's a pretty common, like, maybe it's not a common phrase. Maybe I'm just, just in maybe I'm just a bully. North central Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's north central Pennsylvania, man. The Jersey Seriously. Shore region. It's local. I think you just made that up. I didn't make it up. I'll Google it later. Okay. Not cool. right now. I, yeah. Go ahead. So take what else? Take a word for it. <laughs> hey, what else? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to go into this whole gaslighting tr- joke and I was like, that's not, that's not. No, gaslighting something you made up anyway. I did. I did yeah. make that up. Yeah. 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 I guess this kind of moves back to preparation a little bit, but also on the day of, it's all about communication. It's making yeah. things really clear. Uh, communication in your, in your promotional materials. I mean, we're all involved in youth ministry and you get teens calling you and go like, what, what is this? And you're like, yeah. I've, I've 
communicated this so many times. Yeah. How are you not? But that just means we need to communicate hmm. more. Communicate. Communicate to parents, communicate yeah. to the teens, the kids, whatever your audience is, <laughs> but also the, the people that are responsible to get them there or the, you know, the youth yeah. pastors, youth leaders, making it really clear what's going on. So you don't, cause you don't want to get there and find out, you know, that yeah. they didn't get it. Is Keep- that, is that tough when you are the guy that's outside the church working with people inside the church and I, and I know, I know you, and I think your churches have a really good relationship with you, but you might get somebody that's just like, has it that big of a deal? Like how, how frustrating is that when you're like, I'm trying to help you pull off an event because people aren't going to remember Jordan words. People aren't probably going to remember word of life, but they're going to remember the event, you know, Oh, the person. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Or, like the or, people at that church or the I church think. itself, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, do you find that this is easy? Do you find that this is hard? Is this something that typically takes you a month or two to get a church ready? How, how's that, how's that normally work? It does depend a little bit. Obviously if a church is done, let's just take fast car again. Cause it's probably the thing I've yeah, done the most. Seasoned church, like Calvary, you know, Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> they've only done a few in my time in Pennsylvania. So maybe not, but I have a church I do yeah. every year. I can basically send them we can send emails back and forth or text back and forth to put it on the calendar. I can say, these are dates I'm available. Yeah. And they can say, these are the ones that work. And we got to confirm like what time, cause I can do it in the afternoon or the evening or whatever. But I could pretty much, I, and I, I have a planning guide I've, that I kind of mm-hmm. adapted from some other word of life missionaries. If they follow that guide, it's, it's going to work. Yeah. But there's times I've kind of been bit because I thought they understood or I thought they remembered from a year ago or two oh, years ago, three years ago. Yeah. And you find out the biggest one, I mean, again, you could, you could fail and not have enough workers. We can move past that. Sure. We can make it work with less workers. It's not as much e- and as easy, but if people don't show up and that, I mean, thinking, thinking ahead of this uh, podcast topic, I, I led a fast car at a church. Now it was not a church that had a strong relationship. They weren't kind of connected with word of life all that much. It was, yeah. um, and I was also training a new missionary, how to run fast car. It was kind of embarrassing when absolutely zero children showed up. No race. No I mean, it's way. not like, oh yeah, we had low attendance. It was only 15. No, zero. They had the Jeez. snacks. They had the decorations. They had, wow. we set the track up because we didn't know that nobody was going to show up. But when it all, we waited and we waited and we waited. Wow. And no How long one, did you wait? I think we waited an hour past the check-in. Like we have like a kind of a window of <clears throat> now's the time to check in and test no your cars. No way. That's crazy. And eventually the pastor kind of looked at us. He's like, I guess you can pack up. And I was like, I felt really bad. That's but what so I really, what we found out, and again, I had made assumptions because, and I didn't know the church as well. I'd done one there before um, and it had gone okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. They had, they had kids there and racers and families, yeah. but this time they hadn't, they hadn't spread the word. I mean, they had internally, they had put it in their church bulletin or had a sign up in the church, but yeah. they hadn't, I mean, there's things that you're going to be more successful if you go knock on doors and, and it's kind of old fashioned, but knock yeah. on doors, not even about sharing the gospel there, but inviting people to it yeah. Yeah. or putting signs up at the grocery store or the Panera little me- yeah. message board. Yep. Um, and obviously getting invitations in the hands of your, your kids in your church right. to yeah. hand out to their friends, their friends or, yeah. I've, I mean, I've seen <clears throat> church, churches be really creative. Uh, a lot of public schools will still let you, they, around us, they called them Friday folders. The kids took a little folder of okay. papers home with them every Friday. Oh. And as long as the school well, okayed it, you know, the evangelism wasn't happening on property during church hours. So they would okay it and they could get, you know, all the elementary school kids could take a flyer home and, and, that, yeah. and that school. You know, just, yeah. But I made assumptions that they had it all handled. Wow. Yeah. And it was kind of a, a like I said, a sad day. You set it all up, take, you know, drive an hour and a half to the church, set it up. And then tear it yeah, back down so and sad. drive home. And I know they put money into it by buying all the food. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Well, and it takes you back to that whole old adage: you get what you inspect, not what you expect. Yeah. And all of us are guilty of that. All sure. of us are guilty of of having those things. Uh, I, I don't think there is a youth pastor out there. I don't think there's a children's pastor out there. I don't think there's a youth leader or children's leader out there that doesn't want to pull off excellent events. They no, might. Sure. You might not be super excited about every event that you do. But I think you love the church. I think you love the Lord. I think you love these kids enough that you're like, all right, if we're going to do this, we want it to happen with excellence. But that only happens when you plan and you prepare and you put some of these things in your Well, and and to go on that communication, like tangent that we've been on, people underestimate the importance of a communication strategy. So something we're working on is internal communication with our missionaries internationally. It's It's a project we're working on right now. And, uh, one of the things was, was let's just, someone said, I think once like, let's just send out an email telling people about this thing. And I said, okay, at minimum, we have to send three emails 
preference is seven mm. Mm. on average. That's so the the seven number is 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 a very large one, but that's because um, on average, the old adage was you have to see something at least three times before you recognize it. Mm. Right. But now with advertising the way it is, it's seven times mm. on average before you register. Wow. And so when you're communicating. You don't communicate in the same way seven times. Yeah. You communicate it's not sitting forward. Yeah, I'm not just email. emailing the same thing three, you know, seven times. I'm emailing three different things that are less important and putting that same reminder in hmm. three times, and then four other avenues as well. It might be through a WhatsApp message that we're going to spam out at one point to all our missionaries, or it might be, uh, I mean, in the U.S., people aren't using WhatsApp very often, but you know, it might be yeah. a social media post that comes out twice or three yeah. times. And then it might be a group event that you put out and then people can sign up for the group on a Facebook event. And so you put out in multiple avenues yeah. in multiple ways so that yeah. people can see it different yeah. ways. And so that's, don't underestimate the importance and the power of repetition. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just a little different each time. Well, and that, I mean, we know it with, we know it with camp. Yeah. I tell my guys all the time, pick up the phone. I already called them. Well, when did you call them? I called them a month ago. Call them again. Yeah. Call yep. them again. Yep. It's it's building relationships. It's having those that communication. It's putting things across their path. But then people constantly tell us all that. I never saw that. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't see that. You guys didn't have well, it was there. You know, I'm so sorry that you didn't read the info packet or the or the thing. So well, Jordan, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh we could go on and on and on and on and on. But Josh, I think it's time for Small group. That's right. Small group is a time where maybe we uh, dig a little deeper into this topic or we share some stories. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Funny, sad. Funny, sad. Uh, Jordan actually uh, put a video up of me this week of an old uh, 2000, year 2000 video, summer 2000 video. Uh huh. Or what, maybe that was 2001. 2001. What were you like, five or six years old back then? I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was. Uh, the yeah. cutest little pizza commercial, yeah, little six year old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It's small group. <laughs> small group. <laughs> anyway, so uh, today he also for small threatened group. about telling the story about me falling from the ceiling of Pine Pavilion. <laughs> oh, Gibby! But he did. You ever see that? Or breaking a podium with his forehead. Oh yeah, a plexiglass. I bro I actually broke my forehead with a podium. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> both were broken by the end of it. Jeez, man. Yeah, the, the plexiglass. Does. Yeah, it was a plexiglass. Oh, that's pulpit. crazy. I totally forgot about that. He tried to do the fake slam your head into the you know podium what? trick, you know, and you know I forgot. Missed because I slammed my head into the podium. <laughs> but no, no, I thought I thought we dig a little deeper. Yeah. Because I think there's one aspect of practicality with this. Let's be, and you kind of talked about it at the end. How do you get kids to show up? Yeah. Like, I'm sure people out there are like, okay, that's great. Yeah, I got a plan. Yeah, I got to prepare. Okay, yeah, I got to add other people in. But how do you get kids to show up? What what are, what's one or two things, Jordan, that you think really goes into that yeah. happening? Yeah, I think the number one key, like if, if I only said one thing, it would be relationships. Mm, you cool. have to build relationships with, yeah, I mean, obviously you want them to invite kids you don't know or teens you don't know, but they're not going to if you don't have relationships with yeah. the ones you do have in your youth ministry, your children's ministry. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, there's times, oh, my parents just made me come or whatever to this youth conference yeah. or this evangelistic event, but that doesn't that's not sustainable. Yeah. Um, you have to really work on not just showing up on a Wednesday night or Sunday night, teaching a lesson. Yeah playing games, throwing goldfish at them, and then, like, running home. You have yeah. to actually build relationships inside the church, outside the church, you know, yeah. following up with them, go into their soccer game, go into their recital or their yep. play or whatever, build relationships, show them they're important to you, and mm. you kind of, you're in, you're building an investment in a fund, and yeah. you kind of get some of that back. They're going to want to come to the event. Yeah. They're going to want to well, show and, up. And that's, it's, you bring up an interesting point, because how many times do we hear about a youth pastor mm -hmm. that gets into a church, and he's like, we're not doing anything that we did last year. We're not doing anything that the previous guy did last yeah. year. And I'm not saying that that's always wrong. Sure, those pieces but, and parts. But at the same time, build a relationship with these kids because they're getting to know you. Yeah. And it's a good opportunity for you to get to know them, for you to get to know their culture, for you to get to know their strategy. Yeah. I'm not saying do everything that they want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, unless, of course, it's talking about changing the camp that you are going to to coming to. <laughs> that I totally yeah, agree yeah, yeah. with. But um, no, we, ha we have a kid uh, who 
was in our youth group, I'll say that because I haven't seen him in a very long time now, uh, where it was exactly that. his parents were like, hey, you're going to go kind of thing. And uh, I mean, we tried to build relationship and it's like, I, I don't know, it's something we're still working through because that's the, the best part about small group is the, the practicality of, hey, we haven't figured it all out yet. Right. Yeah. And trying to figure out how do I build a relationship with this kid who obviously doesn't want to have a relationship. And so we kept, I mean, we still, every time I see him, I try and like, you know, say hi and try and connect mm-hmm. with him. But it's just, yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah. yeah. There's something to be said for the fact you're not going to get everybody. You're not going to yeah. have a hundred percent. Like when you do it outside of your normal, uh, uh, you know, Wednesday night, Sunday night, if you do some extra event, some outside thing, you're not going to get everybody to come. You might get some new kids to come that aren't part of your normal group, but, yeah. and that's great, but it's okay. And it's okay to yeah. try things too. I, I just, there's a new youth pastor in my area. I've gotten to know him and uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited because he's doing some creative stuff. And you know what? Some of them uh, might fail. He's doing like yeah. movie nights you know, a couple times a month. Nice. Where kids can just show up, watch a movie, does a little yeah. spiritual application. He's doing a meet me at this coffee shop. I forget what day of the week it is. I'm going to be at this oh, coffee fun. shop between this time and this time. Yeah. Just come hang out. Parents want to drop you off. Or if your parents want to hang out for a few minutes. That's cool. He's opening up the youth room every Wednesday afternoon just to play games. There's no lesson. That's just ha- fun hang. You know, he's trying a couple things. There's low so investment. Can, like, show up early to youth group and then but, it, like. I don't think they're doing youth group. It's just like. Oh. I think. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, okay. It's summer. This is the summertime. Okay, All summertime okay, okay. stuff. Yeah, Josh. Nobody does youth group in the summertime. Well, I mean. <laughs> well, t- if you want to, hey, but, Josh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I love that. I love the idea of of going out to the coffee shop and saying, "Hey, listen, I'm going to come to your turf, or we're going to come to a neutral turf." Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should do a podcast at Oasis. Mm. Do we have enough? I mean, we, I know we have connections there. Do you think we'd have enough of a connection to actually do it there? I don't know. Do like a podcast on the street thing. You ever hey, seen those? Uh, the owner of Oasis. <laughs> what, what, was it, what was it per, per hour to rent their room? Ten, $10 bucks an hour, hour to rent their room. To so. rent their rent their conference room in the back. In Oasis? Yeah. Oh. Did you even know they have a conference room? No. Josh, do you even? I've never been there. What? And see, low yeah. investment. That's the next thing I was going to say, actually. If the event fails, it's yeah. no big deal. It's 10 bucks or, you know, yeah, yeah, meet yeah. me at the coffee shop. It's low investment. If nobody showed up, he just probably drank a couple cups of coffee and it's a little wired. Or if it's movie night and three kids show up, it's not a big deal. And he's try something out. That's why you always watch a movie that you like <laughs> and hand in your receipts for your coffee. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, low investment is good, especially when you're trying something new out. You're not going to be out like $3,000 on some mm-hmm. big event that might fail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, can be helpful. That's crazy. That's awesome. But I, I think a lot, a lot more goes in than we want to go in to yeah. pulling off excellent events. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can't wing it. No, no, you can't. You can't unless you show up at Calvary Baptist on <laughs> Wednesday nights. Then you can wing it. Yeah, you'll be set. They have everything is it figured Baptist? out. Calvary Baptist. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. And they're really good wings. And wow. really good wings at Gamble Farm. Do you want to say hello to anybody? We've never asked any of our, our people if they want to say hello to anybody. <laughs> I'll say hello to Calvary Baptist in Jersey hey, Shore oh, yeah, because right I messed it, up yeah, your name yeah, and yeah. called wow. you First Baptist. Yeah, wow. forget those guys. And uh, no, and and the wife and kids back home. The wife, the kid, the wife and kids back home. The other kids that are here in Florida. Yeah. Um. No, it's it's. Thank you guys for the uh, invite to yeah, be man. on the podcast. For being here. And I'll say hello to all my high school friends. Thank you for not interacting with uh, Jordan and telling him horrible yeah. stories about me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, check us out at Stacking Chairs Pod everywhere, as always. Check us out. Uh, send us an email at stackingchairspod at wol.org. Don't forget to check out the Portion Conference, oh, wol.is slash portion. Join our community group. We'd love for you to get resources, connect mm. with your area missionary, talk about the podcast if you want, whatever. We're looking to build a community here. We're really excited about that. And Kyle, most importantly, we always need to stack those chairs! <laughs> <laughs>